long time no chat. I know it's been quite um, quite a bit of time since I did a video. Um, and if you can hear that, that's just the kettle going. So um, please excuse that sound. Um, I came prepared today. I have so many notes um, and so many things to show you, including a stack of finished objects. Um, that's the one I'm wearing. So that's really exciting. I have a bunch of acquisitions to show because um, it's been, I don't even know, it's been too long since I did my last video, but life has just been so busy. Um, but I'm excited because I have so much to show you. So um, I'm going to try and not do this. <laughs> stop to think or um no I want to think um I'm gonna try to not digress too much um and just do this as organized as possible because there's just so much to show you um so I think the most exciting thing to start with is my finished objects because I have been busy um and I'm only gonna show you know what? I guess I could go grab them I have all of my knit um, FOs here, but I don't have my sewing FOs down here. But um, I'm going to start off with my socks. If you follow me on Instagram, then you'll know, you'll have seen these. Um, and if you don't follow me on Instagram, my Instagram handle is just at underscore hello Stella underscore. Um, and I do share quite a bit there, um, but yes, I knit these in a week. I think it's the fastest I've ever knit socks. I haven't worn them yet because I wanted to show them off here first. And I actually think I'm going to cast on um, a second pair because I just love them so much. I'm going to go handle the kettle and then I'll be back. Okay, so I'm back. I have a deep calf coffee and I grabbed some of my sewn garments, but yes, I finished my socks. Um, and this is just a pattern that I made up on a whim. Um, I haven't blocked these yet, so this is just how they turned out. Um, and I, I put it out on my Instagram asking if anyone would be interested in the pattern. I don't think I'm going to do um, like a tested pattern or anything like that. I think I'm just going to write up like a blog post on my website with the recipe that I use to make these. Um, and then because I want to cast on another pair, I'll probably um, do it as I knit those. So my goal is to do that this fall because they're like such cozy fall socks. And I knit these with my new... Um, non-superwash custom milled tweed. I love it so much. I'm swimming in it. Um, and the colorway I used is championship vinyl. So it's a bit of a chameleon in the light. Um, at first glance, it kind of looks like a deep, deep charcoal gray, almost black. Um, but it does have undertones of green and brown in there. Um, it's supposed to mimic vinyl um, and it is inspired. It was part of my dust jacket collection. So it's inspired by books that I love. If you've never read High Fidelity by, oh gosh, Nick Hornby, you should. Um, and then if you like the book, I strongly suggest that you watch the movie with John Cusack. I have not watched the show because I I'm a diehard fan of the book and the movie. And although I understand the, you know, a female lead, and I do love Zoe Kravitz a lot, John Cusack is just, he's Rob to me. So I strongly, strongly suggest that you maybe pick up a copy of the book or read it or watch the movie. Um, and then yeah, I'll hopefully have the pattern for those soon. 
Um, and then I'm going to continue on with more smaller things. This is the, I hope I say this right, the Wabakimi, Wabakimi hat by the Knitty Pine. Kylie is actually a friend. She lives locally and we did sip and stitch um, together. So this is her pattern. I test knit this and I used my Corydale, um, which is also another one of my custom milled yarns. And this is the color Red Clay. The really interesting thing about this pattern is that you start knitting your brim. I knit this flat and then you can see here is where I seamed it and then you can see where I wove in my end. Um, so then you knit it flat until you've knit the brim and then you join to knit in the round for the rest of all of this textured stuff and then you work your decreases um, and then you weave in your ends you sew up the the seam so when the hat is sitting like that's what it looks like so you can't really tell um and the hat fits really nice i'm not wearing my hair the right way for this but it's a really really cute hat so i'm excited to have that for fall and winter because um, our winters here in canada can be pretty horrible so that is one hat. And then I just finished this one the other night. This is the Chesley Toque by Kiyomi Bergen. I hope I'm saying her first name right. Um, this is the second time I've knit this pattern. And I think that this might just be my most favorite hat that I have ever knit. Um, I knit one last year. I still have it. I, I wore it pretty much all winter. Um, and that one was knit in a much lighter color. So I ordered um, Dererum Natura the Gilead. So it's like their worsted white yarn. I used the color Caramel. And then I held it with the Knitting for Olive Silk Mohair in Cognac. Um, the colors are just perfect together. It's such a nice warm brown. And this I knit, um, this is a size one. The one that I knit last year is a size two, so it did stretch out a little bit. So I decided to knit this one a little bit. But look at that detail. I love this hat so much. And I have enough yarn left over that... I could knit a second hat, so I might knit one for Nick, but I don't know if I would do the texture. I might just knit him plain so that we're not like super matchy. Um, but yes, I'm obsessed with this pattern. So um, strongly recommend it. It knits up so fast. I think I did this in three evenings. Um, and it was a nice little break between knitting um, sweaters because it works up so quick. And then moving on to sweaters, I guess I should start with maybe I'll go in order of what I've finished. So my first one is obviously this one. This is my own design. Um, I... I am working on the pattern. It's all written up and I'm working with my friend Bailey, um, who is tech editing it. Um, I'm not in a real rush because I want to make sure that I do it right. Um, and that the numbers make sense. And this is my first sweater, so I just don't want it to be this like half-assed rushed thing. Um, I actually want it to be done right but I love how it turned out the yarn blocked out so nice so this is again my custom milled Corydale I used um, the flowers are done with bare so this was just like the natural fiber and then I used dune to do the leaves let's see if I can get this so it's like this pale warm brown and then I used um, sedum which is this really nice, I want to say it's a mint green, 
but it's got some warmth to it. You can kind of see how it's playing in the light right now. The light's not the best. Um, and yeah, I'm just so happy with it. So now comes the, the fun part of figuring out um, the math and the sizes for everything else. And then it'll move into testing. I don't, I don't see this coming out this year. Um, just because again, I don't really want to release it in December. Um, I feel like everyone's just so busy at that time of year that it probably wouldn't be like the most, it wouldn't make the most sense. So it'll most likely be next year, but I guess keep your eyes peeled for a test knit. Maybe we'll see if I go through with this, I don't know. Um, and moving on, um, if you went back and watched some of my older videos, you'll see that I was test knitting a sweater from Melody Hoffman. Um, and then I think because it was summer, it just kind of got put on the back burner. And so now it's finally coming out. It, the pattern will be released on October 29th. And it finally has a name. <laughs> So I started testing this back in like April or May. Um, this is the Ava jumper. It's a boxy sweater. You can see how boxy it is. Um, and it is actually knit from the bottom up and then you work your, sh your front and you work your back and you do some shaping and then you pick up and knit your collar and then you pick up and knit the sleeves. Um, what I did for mine, because obviously knitting bottom up, you can't really try it on. And I, knitting bottom up sweaters tend to really like freak me out. Um, so what I did is I actually did a provisional cast on. And um, I actually think I can see it from right here. So I started right here and I knit the amount of length that she said to knit. So this much, which I think is seven and a half inches. And then I did the, the front and the back shaping and I did the collar and then I tried it on and it's supposed to be a cropped sweater. And I knew it was going to be a cropped sweater and it was going to be something that I could layer over my dresses and especially my summer dresses and stuff like that. So I could take them into fall and winter. It was a boob. <laughs> it was so cropped so I had to add length um so where are we here so yeah you can kind of see where I did this little join right here so I ended up adding two inches maybe two and a half to the length that she recommended and then I knit the the ribbing so I knit my body longer than the pattern suggests, but if I stand up, like you'll see with the sweater that I'm currently wearing, which I'll talk about in a minute, like that's how cropped it is, even with the added length. Um, so I know that this won't really be a sweater that I wear too much with jeans unless I'm wearing like a layered top underneath it. Um, but it will be perfect to layer with sweaters. And I used Wooly Mammoth Fiber Company. Um, Emma's yarn is amazing. If you can ever shop her updates, I strongly recommend it. Her yarn is so beautiful. She puts so much thought into everything that she does. Um, she is located in Northern Ireland and she's a natural dyer. So she uses, um, natural dyes, um, plants, things like that. So this is her BFL, I say Masham, but I've heard some people say Massam, um, DK yarn. So it's 75% BFL and 25%, I'm gonna say Masham, Massam. Um, the skeins are 100 grams and 240 meters. And I used the colorway Dark Wildflower. So it's this like really cool purpley gray. 
which I don't really have anything this color in my wardrobe. So I think this will be really, really nice. And I can add warmth to it with like this hat or I have some like dresses and stuff that I think would go really nicely. So that is another FO and I'm calling it an FO because like I said, I started this in the spring. I had one sleeve left in it and there was no, there was like no mention of when this was coming out. So I just put it on the back burner and I was like, you know what, I'm going to move on to other things that I want in it. Um, and I'll circle back when it comes time. And so, um, last month I figured, you know what, let's just do it. So I think I knit the sleeve in a night and a half. Um, and then it just felt silly. I was like, why didn't I just do this from before? Um, but it's done and I can't wait to wear it. It's so soft and the drape is amazing. Um, and then this is my other FO. Um, so this is the Versatile Sweater by Gregoria Knits. Nope, Gre Gregoria Fibers, sorry. Um, it's like a really oversized, baggy, um, circular yoke sweater. Um, this worked up so quick. It knit up so fast. I think I was using a 10.5 needle. Um, I think the only thing I changed was I went down a size in my needle, but, um, you're supposed to knit it with bulky weight yarn. I knit mine with Plotiloki. I held it double. I had four plates and I used three. So I still have a plate left over. And this is my first time wearing Plotiloki. Um, and I'll, I will say yesterday I was wearing, um, a store-bought turtleneck knit um, from H&M. I bought it a few years ago and I kept going like this. So I don't know if it was just because it was like the first time in months wearing something on my neck, but I kept itching. Um, this, I'm only wearing a t-shirt underneath and it has been so good. I'm not itchy at all. So I'm so happy about that because I've heard some people who are like, I love Plotiloki, but I do find it itchy and I have to wear things underneath. So it doesn't like, doesn't make me itch. Um, but yeah, I've just got the cups rolled right now cause I was baking before. Um, but yeah, so it's a circular yoke. I think there's four increases. Um, and then you can see there's a split hem. So I went longer in the back and shorter in the front. Um, and the sleeves are nice and long, which I have very long arms. So I'm really happy about that. But you can see like, I just always cuff everything. Um, and yeah, so yes, so this is Plotilopi and the color is Dark Woods. I've shown this before, but you can see there's like hints of rust in there. You can see how fluffy it is. It is such a fluffy sweater. Um, and it blocked amazing. So it was, you know, it wasn't horrible when I knitted it before, but then I blocked it. So that's what I shared. I shared a little clip in my stories this morning of the drape and I was kind of giving it a bit of a wiggle on the hanger. It is so dreamy. So now I'm just so excited to knit with my other Plo to Lofi stash. Um, I'm trying to decide what to knit with those next. So yes, so those are my finished objects, but I did want to also show one other thing that I have. I did not knit this. I had this sample knit for my most recent shop update, which is the Woodland Collection. Um, so this is the Douglas Cardi by Andrea Mowry. And this was sample knit for me by an unreal knitter, 
Um, she's actually pretty local to me. She's just in Welland. Um, it's like maybe 40 minutes to an hour away. She knit this in eight days. I don't know how. Um, but yeah, it is so beautiful and I finally got to use these buttons. Oh no, my battery's gonna die. Um, so yeah, I just had to show this. Um, but the yarn is pretty much sold out, so I'm sorry if you like it and you want to knit one. I don't know if I'll be doing that collection right away again. Um, and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Um, so we left off with FOs and now I'm going to talk about my current whips. Um, and I'll start small and then work my way big. So... I did share this on my Instagram, but I started these socks. Oh boy. Um, so these are the Grow Socks by Fiber Tails. I added a contrast heel, and then I'll do a contrast toe. This is my first sock, and I just keep this in my um, my bag and if we're ever out and about or driving somewhere this is what I work on um, so I probably could have been done by now but I've just been taking my time with them but this little cable detailing here is super pretty and I'm once again using my tweed base um, this is in the color Sally from Practical Magic and it's just, it's a really fun knit. I'm now just on the, the, the boring stuff, so I just have to knit the foot and then the toe and then I'll pick up and knit the second sock. Um, but yeah, and I love the color contrast. This warm kind of brown picks up in some of the, the nips in the tweed. So I think it was like a perfect complement to the tweed yarn. Um, so that is my first whip. And I'm just gonna steal this up here. My second whip, the one that I'm at most, I guess I'm working on the most right now, is this. Um, this is the Novice Sweater by Petite Knit. Um, so I have one sleeve done. I didn't knit it super long because you can see like the yarn's got a lot of bounce to it. Um, and I'm still working on the body because I've started the second sleeve. Essentially, I'm going to knit the sleeve, finish that off, and whatever yarn I have left will go to the body, um, which is everywhere. So, oh boy. This is the sleeve cake. This is the body cake. And this is the final skein. Um, so yeah, it's Brooklyn Tweed. It's the shelter. And the colorway is wood smoke. I bought this last year, um, and I had intended to knit something else with it, but never got around to it. And then I had started knitting a novice sweater last year, and I wasn't super big on the color, and I just wanted something that would go with everything. So I love how this is coming out. Um, and it's come together really fast. So I started this last week. So this is just what I knit on, especially in the evenings when I just need something mindless um, after a long day. And then my other whip, which I think is the one that I am the most excited about right now. Um, it is an all over color work sweater. And it's probably my most ambitious project I've ever done, but let me just say that it is such a fun knit. I have loved every moment of working on this. Um, so this is called Colored Crosses by Anne Wenzel. Um, and as I said, it's an all over color work sweater. I've done, I'm 14 rows away from the sleeve split. And then you can 
see, well maybe you can see, um, the neck shaping here. So I just have to pick up and knit the collar, which I'll do once I separate for sleeves probably. Um, just because there's so many stitches on here right now. Um, so, yeah, this has been, I might work on this this weekend actually now that I've got it pulled out. I'm just like, oh, I want to get back to it. Um, I pretty much, I haven't touched this in about a week and a half, but I knit all of this in, I only knit in the evening right now. So I think this was maybe four nights worth of work. It's really addicting because it's color work. So you start knitting it and then you're like, oh, well, I just want to do one more row. And then, well, I might as well just finish a section. Um, so I love this so much. <laughs> um, and I really do, I want to try and have it finished as soon as possible. Um, I feel like if I give myself an actual deadline, I'm probably going to not do it, but we'll see. Um, so my contrast colors, I have this one here, which was just a, a one pot wonder type of colorway that I did. It's kind of flesh toned, pale, it's kind of like a pale, dusty, sandy pink. Um, and then I'm using... Poppy red, which I think is just like a nice little pop. And then I had this, um, I want to say this is like a dusty sage from Holst Garn. I'm holding all of these. This is held double, and this is held double, and this is held double. So those are the three contrast colors. Um, the dusty pink being the bigger section. And then the sage and the red being the little pops. And then this is the main color. And this is um, classified as a DK. So everything that I've read about this, it will bloom significantly. I do need to say that, okay. So this is tin. It's a Norwegian yarn. Um, and I believe I'm using the color ochre. Um, but yeah, it's Norwegian wool. In the skein, it feels scratchy. In the, 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 the whip itself, it feels so soft. So I'm really excited to finish this, block it, wear it. Um, I think once I get past all of the sleeve increases and it's just knitting in the round mindlessly essentially because um, I love color work. I think this will go pretty fast. I've never done color work sleeves so that will be interesting. Um, the pattern actually you, you do work decreases in the sleeves so that they you know taper to your arm. I have to figure that out. I don't know if I'm gonna do that or if I'm just gonna maybe knit a straight sleeve and then do a, a decrease and then do the collar, collar, the ribbing. <laughs> um, but yeah, those are my whips. I'm loving every single one of them because they're all, you know, providing different levels of difficulty. Um, and I'm using my Knitting Nelly bag this was the last one that I got from her. It's very fall, so I think it was perfect for holding one of my fall projects. Um, and so yeah, those are my whips. And then I think I'm just going to go right into my yarn acquisitions. Um, so I think I'm going to start with wool and then, or maybe... No, I'm going to do fabric first because I love it. <laughs> There's a lot. Um, so I recently started a new quilt, which I would show you, but it's currently tucked away, safe and sound away from the kids because it was like, I would say I probably cut close to 500 pieces for it. Um, but turns out I 
cut 240 squares the wrong size. So I had to order more fabric, um, but to make the shipping worth it, I found these two prints as well, and then I couldn't resist them because I thought they were super cute. So this is a quilting cotton. Um, mushrooms going in all different directions. I just loved the colors so much. Um, so it'll be for a future quilt. And then I also got this one, which I thought was really adorable. And I got enough of this that it could probably be the backing to um, like a kid's quilt. So I really, really loved that. Oh, look at the little snail. Um, so yes, so those are the new quilting cottons that I got. And then I did get garment fabric. Um, I might have gone a little overboard, but I'm very excited. Um, so all of these are from Blackbird, Fab Blackbird Fabrics out in BC. Um, I love ordering from them. I usually, it's between Blackbird Fabrics, which is BC, um, or my local, um, not yarn shop, fabric shop, uh, hand knit yarn. Um, those are like the only two that I really shop from for garment fabrics. So this one is a six and a half ounce laundered linen twill in midnight spruce. These are gonna become pants. Look at that combo. Oh, I love it. Um, so these are probably gonna become the bisque trousers um, that Vivian, I'll link her. I don't wanna say her last name incorrectly. Um, but I'm obsessed with everything she does. She's an architect. She's a rock climber. She writes out and creates beautiful sewing patterns. I've done two of her patterns already. Um, she also is an amazing knitter. I'm just, yeah, I love everything she does. So this will be a pair of her new pants. Um, and then I also got some flannel. So it's flannel twill. Nope, this one's a flat. This one's flannel twill. This one's teak black and ivory. I think this is my favorite one. I'm obsessed. These are also going to become pants because who doesn't want a pair of flannel pants? Also goes really nicely with this sweater. Um, and then I got this flannel, which I bought previously before. So this is a cotton flannel. I made a top out of this and it's probably my most worn sewn garment. I sewed it two years ago, but the sleeves are getting a bit tight, so I wanna redo it. Um, or I might just make an entirely new top and then maybe make that one into a t-shirt or like an elbow length, I'm not sure yet. Um, but yeah, I loved this color. So it's like pale, pale gray and like a warm yellow and some rust and black. Um, also goes really nicely with this sweater.
Okay, I don't have a lot of time left, but I'm going to try and get through this as quick as possible. Um, so yes, I got this yarn. I talked about it. I think I went over the pattern that I'm going to knit with it. Um, that will hopefully be one of my next cast-ons. Um, and then other acquisitions. I did a, it was a trade, um, but um, Rachel from Six and Seven six and seven fiber. Um, she just became a new mom and she was asking about, um, slings for babies. So I was like, I have some and I'm more than happy to send you one. So she ended up, um, taking one off my hands. So I'm so happy that she did that. But she also, so she ended up sending me yarn as a thank you. And I was so overwhelmed. Um, so this color is Delphinium. Everything that she sent me is on her amaranth base, which is a non-superwash fingering weight. So this lovely blue. And then I got this Parthenon. This I'm really excited to knit maybe a pair of socks with. It is so beautiful. Um, and then Snow Capped, which is just so beautiful a little blown out but um she really spoiled me and then sock sets I actually don't I have one sock set in my stash so this one is called Desert Bloom it's from her August 2021 um club her sock club it's amazing Nick actually really likes this so this might become a future pair of socks for him and then this one is from her color theory club which was also from the August, August 2021. And this is just absolutely stunning. A bunch of greens, and I love green so much. So she sent me those. I feel so incredibly spoiled. So thank you, Rachel. Her yarn is amazing. And I now have a little stash that I've gotten, um, which I'm so excited about. And then the final acquisition that I wanted to share is from Wild in the Woods. Um, I kind of gave a little bit of a teaser at this in my stories, but this is their, which one did I get? Oh boy, I think this was the, the fall, fall forager box. That's it. Um, so this is a curated, box that they put together, all Serena puts together, and like the most amazing little details. So these here from where they live on Vancouver Island. And then I think I need to start with, so there's this beautiful screen printed bag. Look how beautiful is that? So much detail. So this little project bag, which I thought was super cute, perfect for like socks or maybe a hat. Um, and then this Into the Woods hand poured candle. It's a little sticker on the top. And it smells unreal. Like, look at that. So I will most definitely be lighting that probably this weekend, if I'm being honest. I was saving it to show in the video. Um, I thought this was really cute. I'm going to use it as a bookmark. And then there's a little blurb on the back. It reads light. Look to the space between the trees for answers. I just thought that was so beautiful. And then in here, this is what makes Serena's boxes and things like that so special. So there's a little tiny cotton bag and inside of the bag was a bunch of mushroom stickers and false stickers. So these are definitely, they're gonna go on something, probably one of my sketchbooks. There's this little tiny spoon and then wildflower bath salts and it's like a foot soak. Um, oh my gosh, it smells unreal. Look at that. 
So those are all of the extra goodies. There was stitch markers, but I'm already using most of them and this little progress keeper, which I think is a deer antler. Um, and the yarn. Look at these. So you can, for her boxes, she gives you two different weight choices. Um, there's a fingering weight and a worsted. I went with the worsted. Um, so this one is called Lobster Mushroom. And look at all of the tones in here. So I think I'm going to knit a pair of mittens with these. And then this one is Spruce Needle Tea. So there is like a hint of a spruce green in there, but it's almost like black. I opened this and gasped. It was just so beautiful and so perfect. And I've been waiting so patiently to share it. Um, so yeah, that was the Fall Forager box. 110% worth every dollar that I spent on it. Um, she did an advent last year and that was the advent that I um, purchased and it was probably one of the best advent calendars I've ever received. Not that I'm well versed in those, um, but yeah. Okay, I'm back. Um, it's kind of golden hour right now, so the lighting is a little bit nice. Um, geez. Uh, so yeah, that was all of my acquisitions that I got to show you. Um, all of my lifts, all of my finished objects, which is really exciting. I think this weekend I might, well this weekend I really want to try and finish this. Um, so this is top priority and if I can finish that I might cast on my forager sweater um, just so I've got a really basic knit on the needles at all times. Um, and then I really want to um, sew my bisque trousers so I think this is the fabric I'm going to go with first, which is a little nerve wracking. Um, so fingers crossed I can like pull it off. But that is everything. Um, I'm going to try. I was actually, um, I didn't start at the beginning of the month, but I was trying to do like a vlog type of thing. So I think I'm going to try and do that at least once a month, um, and because there's a new month just around the corner, it might be perfect to start, so maybe for like the month of October I'll do a vlog and then maybe I'll do like another one of these little catch-up videos to share what I'm working on. Um, but yeah, I didn't even get to like touch on artwork or anything like that that I've been working on, so maybe that will be my goal for October. Um, and maybe for the next video, we can also chat about books. I have been reading, um, I've been listening to audiobooks while I work, and I think this month I'm at 90 hours <laughs> of reading. Um, and I've, I've read technically two series and I'm starting my third series, so lots to talk about um and maybe what you can do is in the comments you can tell me what book you are reading or a book that you're looking forward to reading um because i'm always looking to add to my list um and i like hearing what other people are reading i since december have become infatuated with fantasy so if it's a fantasy book perfect um but yeah, um, thank you for being patient while I figured life out, um, and if you have any questions about anything that I shared, just leave them in the comments below, and I will be happy to answer that. Um, if you like this video, then maybe give it a thumbs up. Um, if you like knitting and crocheting and sewing and art and books, maybe some dyeing, because I'm, I'm going to start doing that. Um, my studio is just a mess, but if you like all of that stuff, then maybe subscribe to my channel. Who knows? Um, 
I'm gonna start editing editing this now and hopefully it'll be up ASAP for you. And I hope that you're well and happy ball and we'll chat soon. Bye.